Welcome to my channel everyone. This is Hot Mess and Hot Glue. My name is Lynn. Let's have some fun. Today's video is a playlist, so please stick around to get just a little bit more information on that. To get started here on our first project, I thought it might be fun to make some s'mores. Now, originally I thought it would be fun to do a larger scale s'more, so this is kind of what you see me doing here, and I've got this really thick foam from Hobby Lobby. and. Once I made the really large square, I decided it was just a little too large. And what I really wanted to do was I wanted to shrink this down just a bit and make these just a little bit more small and a little bit more cute. So all I'm doing is taking some of these self, not the self adhesive, but some of the adhesive cork, the sheets that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to decorate the foam using brown to simulate the chocolate and I'm going to use my white marker to simulate the marshmallows. If you look here in the upper corner, you can see what they look like inside the little jar. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing s'mores, you might have noticed a couple pop-ups on the screen. Today is the uh, Let's Go Camping Challenge, and we have our two hosts taking care of all of this for us. We've got Megan over at The Crafty Quinn, and we have Adrian over at Full Time DIY Mommy. Please double check the description box. Make sure you click on their links and go check out their channels as well. These girls They've come up with some of the most amazing ideas. Along with their channels, I'm also going to have the playlist for today. I say buckle up, press play all, and enjoy some camping themed DIY. The little s'mores in here, I think these are just adorable. I also wanted to do the ingredients, so I took really thick foam that was in a dark brown, I cut that up for the chocolate, and I used some more of the adhesive cork to make the graham crackers, and for the marshmallows, Hobby Lobby had some really small white uh, cotton balls that I decided to use. Now that that one's done, again, you kind of see me going back in using that larger size s'more, but instead of using the foam, I decided to use a coaster from a previous project, and I'm painting this fake block of chocolate that came in a bag of, I want to say it was like ice cream and things like that from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just reusing the chocolate bar from it for my s'more. Using air dry clay, I'm just gonna form as much of a marshmallow shape as I can. We recently went to the store and got my girls some s'mores mix and s'mores mix, the ingredients to make s'mores. And we found these really nice, like thick square shaped marshmallows that just fit really perfect on the graham cracker. So that was kind of the shape and where I got the inspiration to do the more square shape as opposed to your typical marshmallow. Once I got the perfect size, I just added that to the graham cracker and the chocolate. And then using just a little bit of paint, I wanted to give that marshmallow just a little bit more character. I didn't, I just went to my stash, I grabbed kind of some random colors of brown, some lighter browns and darker browns. And really all I did was add a little bit of water to some of them and I just brushed on a little bit of paint to make it look like it was a little bit more of a toasted marshmallow. So smearing it with my finger seemed to be the best actually and that kind of got me like an all over coverage. Once I got the color that I wanted, I did just use a small dab of hot glue just to attach it to the graham cracker and to the chocolate piece. As you see here, they're both just kind of styled together. I only did like one graham cracker, so it's kind of an open face more. So it's a little bit different, but I did not want this to be the focal point of uh, the projects. Although I love s'mores when I'm camping, this is definitely not the only thing I wanted to focus on. So I just wanted to give you another couple close-up looks at how these little jars turned out and what their ingredients look like. So we've got again the graham cracker, we have the chocolate, and we have the marshmallow. Today's video, as I mentioned before, is part of a playlist. Now it's it was really just kind of what our take on camping is. Now it could be what we use while we're camping, camping decor, anything of that nature. And I, to me, this is the most fun again, when we do these challenges and we get to use our own interpretations. As far as, you know, hitting that play all button, the most fun is really getting to see how we all interpret this one little uh, topic. 
at Dollar Tree, I found this cute little truck and trailer and I knew I wanted to use it for some kind of camping theme or tier tray decor. So I'm gonna get rid of that bright shiny blue and I'm just gonna go over it in a metallic silver color that I have from Folk Art. And I'm gonna give it two coats to make sure that the blue is completely covered on that. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, in the end, I actually completely changed the cover so the silver ended up as just being kind of a primer. The trailer itself, I do a couple coats of white chalk paint to give that a nice base primer. And then I wanted to go in with a more vintage look, not necessarily vintage, but just old and rustic. You know, when I think camping, I think I think we're getting dirty. I think we're, we're out in the woods. And so what I wanted to do, <laughs> what I wanted to do is take these browns and distress it and then I wanted to take some orange and yellow and kind of mix those together and just give some really interesting older colors to this little small uh, trailer that I have here. Now I do have a larger trailer that was gifted to me that I decided to kind of do the exact same, not the exact same color scheme, but I did a very similar color scheme. Once all of the paint was dry, I did go back over it with the Waverly Antique Wax, and that just kind of adds a little bit of a, a, a rustic kind of used feel. So here's that ceramic van, that I, van, <laughs> that ceramic trailer that I was gifted. And again, we're just gonna do an all over coat with white chalk paint, just to make sure that we have full coverage on that. Once that's dry, I'm gonna take the exact same colors, and I'm. it's really just a mixture of browns, dark browns, orange, and I believe I wanna say maybe tan or yellow. And once I get the coverage that I'm looking for and the colors that I'm looking for, I went back over this one as well and I aged it using the same Antique Waverly Aging Wax. And what's fun about this one is it does light up. You can see kind of on the bottom there's a little switch. And so when this one's all painted and it's lit up, it's extremely cute. And I chose to use it on a tiered tray and I love the idea of this, but because it's ceramic, I had originally thought maybe bringing it outside to the patio, but our wind storms here can be pretty crazy and I didn't want it to get knocked over and then end up becoming broken. So this orange detail here, I think that's what really brought these two just kind of, I feel like these are the colors that my grandmother had on her couch at some point, if not all over her house. And so that to me was how I interpreted camping is with family and it's been years since we've been camping and I remember going with my grandmother. So a lot of my colors and inspiration kind of came from those memories. And now that both of these little travel trailers or campers are finished, I just think they look absolutely adorable, personally. Um, the little one, I couldn't help but just do an itty bitty version. You know, if it's if it's gonna be tiny, I gotta do it. I just have to do a tiny version of anything I find. So I knew right away when I was gifted the trailer itself, the, the, sorry, the larger of the two campers, I was gifted that. I knew I was gonna use it for a project, but I hadn't had any of those back in the time. So it was really fun to do holiday lights to it. Um, I didn't want to go into too much detail with this honestly because it again it was just to me the, the more straightforward and the simple I didn't want to take away from the fun part of the camper itself. Again I'm using another one of these um, coasters that I got from a previous project in my um, mystery box challenge and you'll see here all I do is I place it on the sticky part of the cork and then I trim it down so that it'll fit. Now, instead of using these as s'mores, I liked the texture of them, and so one of them I cover in Waverly Chalk Paint and ink, and then I do the other one in Waverly Chalk Paint White. Now, I'm using these as kind of a backdrop. As I said, I wanted to use the cork more for the texture than the color itself. So once I got a full coverage, I dug through some stickers that I had found. Um, I found a couple of them at Hobby Lobby when I was there last, and then using deconstructed 
uh, ping pong game from the Dollar Tree. I used the little posts and then I used some painted tiny dominoes that I also got from the Dollar Tree. And I just kind of makeshifted a little stand for each one of these little stickers that I liked. The We've got the Rocky Mountains since we're here in Colorado. And then on the other one, it just says Happy Camper. Now, I didn't want the base of these signs to be just this domino. So I just went through with some base filler from the Dollar Tree and I hot glued some teeny tiny little rocks to them. And it just kind of added that extra touch so that it wasn't just this almost straw looking handle to it. But again, I didn't want to distress it. I didn't want to do too much more to these little signs. I thought that they were extremely fun, very to the point. And actually my friend and I were just saying, we don't normally use a lot of stickers in our DIY. So stepping out and kind of looking at these stickers in a different way was a really fun, really fun part of kind of adding new uh, character to these. While I was at Hobby Lobby, I was in the party section and I found these paper straws and they have a wood grain to them. And so I knew I obviously needed to use them. And I think the kind of first thing that was going to come to anyone's mind is to use them as, uh, you know, wood, you know, firewood. And so I did just cut them down and then on a really thick foam that I was using in the previous projects, I just kind of freehanded the shape of what I thought maybe a flame was. Again, guys, I'm, I'm working on this drawing thing. And I cut that out and then putting a slit through the top of one of them and a slit through the bottom of the other one, I'm able to put them together to make more of a 3D shaped flame. And to make sure that these quote unquote straws or logs stick together, I cut out a small notch using my utility knife and then I hot glue those together. Now, I also wanted to make sure that the flames themselves had a base. And so I just traced out a circle, I cut it out, and then just using some brown um, acrylic paint that I had on hand, I painted the base of this brown. So that way it wouldn't stick out too much because I knew I was gonna go through and add the um, straws slash logs. Now to glue this little like three, 3D piece together, I just kind of added a very, very tiny amount using my fine tipped Sure Bonder glue gun. Um, fun fact about this glue gun coming up here is this is actually going to be the giveaway item because we reached 1000 subscribers yesterday, guys. I cannot tell you how excited I am. And this is one of those items I cannot live without. The the detail tip on this, I hardly ever burn myself and so I really want to gift this to somebody who is crafting and who loves to craft. I'm just taking some oil-based paint markers because the oil base will have a little bit more of a shine to it and I'm just playing around with yellows, oranges, and reds that I have to just kind of create more of a, a fire, campfire flame appearance. And then again here you see I'm painting that base one coat over just it doesn't need to be complete coverage because we're going to place the little logs on there and give it some more character that way. Using this foam you want to be a little bit careful. You don't want to put too much glue because it will start to bubble and it will start to melt. However, using just the right amount. I thought that this little this little fire pit, this little campfire came out pretty cute. It's a little 3D version. Um, I have it both displayed on its own stand and then also on this little, it's like a fire pit stand that was at Hobby Lobby in the doll furniture section. I could not pass this guy up. Um, I did add it to a couple of the tiered trade decors so that I was, um, I'll show some pictures of that, but this little campfire, it was extremely easy, but for me, I was, I think I was just more proud of it because I kind of just made it up as I went. And now there's nothing spectacular about it. Now to go with the campfire, there's, you know, we've already done a couple s'mores, but I really wanted to add some kind of like a, like a grilled hot dog element. So using these little skewers that I have from the Dollar Tree, they are toothpicks. And no, 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 I'm sorry, they are not toothpicks. They're like appetizer picks. And so I just broke off the ends of them and then I just used my air dry clay. And there it is, there's that giveaway for 1,000 subscribers, guys. Um, using my air dry clay, I just kind of made the shape of a hot dog. I painted it kind of like a reddish color, brownish color, and that's supposed to kind of simulate a little bit of a you know, campfire hot dog, I guess. <laughs> I had this sign 
Um, actually, this is one of the, a gifted sign from my neighbor and it was just a Christmas sign and it was a little beat up on the corners. So I always knew I was gonna repurpose it. Now, I didn't quite love my first approach. As you see here, I'm just using some Dollar Tree wood grain contact paper. I thought it might be fun to add a little bit of um, like camping sayings from stickers that I also found at Hobby Lobby. But once I got them all on there, it was just too dark and it didn't really, it just didn't sit well. I didn't love it. So I decided to go through and paint the inside of it black because I had these stars and I thought, well, maybe I can do a little bit of a let's sleep under the stars kind of theme. And it just wasn't coming together. And finally I just had it. So I took it completely apart and I removed all the stars. I removed the um, contact paper from the back and I cleaned up all the glue. Once that was done, I just painted all of the green exterior white. Now this did take a couple coats, but using chalk paint, it wasn't so bad. Now using a Dollar Tree calendar, there were a couple pictures on the back that I wanted to use. There was this smaller explore, then there was the shape of the moon. Now this is the larger of the two explore pictures that I'm using here on this project after all. Hobby Lobby had some really fun um, vinyl paper on sale. So I did pick up a couple different colors and using some foam squares, I glue the foam squares down to give this picture a little bit of height and dimension from the back of this picture. Now to kind of show off that dimension, I went through and added some little itty bitty pine cones that came from kind of like a confetti bag that I also found at Hobby Lobby, but there, I mean, if you've got trees in the backyard, I'm sure you could find some or even some at the Dollar Tree. Using the moon from that other calendar piece, I just added it to the corner and then I really did like the stars. So I just kind of added a little bit of character to this little picture. And in the end, I was very happy that that's the route that I took that little picture. On this here, I liked the triangle shape. It kind of mimicked a little bit more of a mountain. And using some more of these stickers from Hobby Lobby, I just wanted to keep it simple. But because it was a tiered tray decor, I really liked the idea of using this triangular piece because on the other side of it, there's a little succulent. So it's decorative on both sides. Then adding some of this really pretty green vinyl that I found at uh, Hobby Lobby on clearance. It wasn't on clearance, but it was on sale. I believe it was 50% off. I just wanted to add a little bit of color to it, but there wasn't too much that I could do to it without taking away from its simplicity and the beauty in its simplicity. Here is that first picture when it's all finished. I added some hot glue and a little bit of sand, but the sand is really hard to notice here in the, in the video photograph that I'm showing you now. I love the 3D aspect of the way that that little calendar piece is popping off the backing. Now here's that succulent. You can see one side of it is the succulent, then the other side of it will be just our simple explore nature. I used the compass sticker that also came in that same sticker pack that I got from Hobby Lobby. Didn't have to buy too many stickers. I just was able to find a pack or two that had quite a few options. And then I just picked the favorites of those and utilized the ones that I liked the most. Now on this next project, what I do is I took apart this um, ping pong game that you get at the Dollar Tree and I'm using the suction cup stand that the like the net is supposed to go on I attached my wood grain straws and then I'm gonna create just a little string now I really don't know even really what you would call this or wholeheartedly what exactly its purpose was but I had all these like really cute pom-poms in the white and in the light brown and they just kind of were reminiscent of s'mores and I had some leftover put together tiny s'mores um, like graham cracker sandwiches and so <laughs> s'mores or graham cracker sandwiches same thing so I decided to make kind of a little I don't know like a swag I guess I don't know maybe it's a banner I'm not really sure it was just added decor it was supplies that I had on hand so figured I would just kind of play around when you guys if you know me if I get in the crafting zone anything can come out of any of my stash now I did not want the clear suction cup to show through. So the same as I did on the little stands and the picture frames before when I used the dominoes, I'm just taking a little bit of hot glue and these tiny little vase filler rocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just giving them one good, um, one good coat. I'm just sticking them onto the plastic stand themselves. I had tried using sand, but the sand did not work. I ended up removing that and just sticking with the rocks. I have this leftover 
house shape kind of wood cutout that I got in a big pack at Christmas time from Target and I got a ton of them. And using that green vinyl, I just lightly press that over the top of it to kind of give it a full coverage but again the back half of it is a really pretty natural wood color i also have this kind of cream colored vinyl that i got at hobby lobby also and i just love the way that the two complemented them complemented each other so for this project i just simply added some vinyl i added a sticker and voila there you go you have a very simple straightforward camping-esque you know, the, the color and the aesthetic of the color scheme kind of goes with camping. Again, just using some leftover items that I had in my craft room. I'm taking these tumbling blocks, I'm taking a strip of leftover vinyl and another sticker, and I'm just gonna create a couple more signs that I can add to my tiered tray. These, I think, are the most fun because you're just sitting there looking at what you have and you're just creating them as they go. But I feel that they do add that little extra pop of color and personality when you're doing small tear tray decor such as I am in this video. Now I really liked the smaller version of this adventure picture and I just, you see I just keep trying to use it however I just decided I was going to go with a more home state kind of theme with that so creating a little stand so that this would stand up on its own I just attached the Centennial State sticker that also came in my sticker pack this is everything all put together. I really like the way this turned out. It can be a little bit cluttered if you try to stick everything on this tiny little tiered tray. However, I chose the littler, the littler, the smaller of the tiered trays that I have just because I thought it was adorable and some of these little itty bitty pieces just really needed to be on a small tiered tray. That is it for today's video, you guys. Please make sure that you check out the links in my description box for both of our hosts. Again, that is Megan over at The Crafty Quinn, and we have Adrian over at The Full-Time DIY Mommy. And hit play all on this playlist. Make sure you sit down, you snuggle on the couch. It's almost the end of the week. You've made it halfway through. Enjoy this playlist and please have tons of fun. Now, again, I do want to go back to our giveaway. I'm extremely grateful for every single person who has watched my videos, who has made their comments and who has subscribed to my channel and is joining me on this really, really fun, exciting journey. I want to just let you know, I will be doing the drawing. I will film it and I will post it on my channel. And if you have your bell and notifications on, you will be notified. I will also keep Keep it posted for a few days so that the winner has an opportunity to see that they won and then we will figure out how we're going to contact each other so that I can get your new glue gun sent to you. So if you're looking for what today's emoji is, it is this little party hat guy. I really wanted to just celebrate. As always, I've made a quick mention in the ending here. If you guys are having any trouble and if you are struggling, please reach out to Heart Support. If you're unsure what Heart Support is, contact me directly. My information's in the description box. Thanks again, guys.